here we are on an overcast day in the middle of beautiful Houston County. This is the Ingen Farm, located between Iton and Caledonia in Spring Grove. And we are here today to make one of the most beloved Christmas treats in all of history from Norway. That's right, it's Rosette Day. Let's go in and see who's here to bake rosettes. Hvordan går det i dag? Thank you, Beth. Oh my goodness, look at your beautiful tree. Oh, it's so lovely in here. Merry Christmas. Go you. Okay, we're gonna sneak around. I just need to see your beautiful Yule today. Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi, kids. Merry Christmas to you. This is just absolutely gorgeous. Who's your main decorator? Um, the kids. The kids? Wow, impressive. And your beautiful new piano is in yes, position. This ah, is Jean Ellingson's piano. Oh, she bought in 1982, and now it's mine. Jean Ellingson's 1982 piano now in the proper home of <laughs> our Spring Grove <laughs> choral music educator. Thank you for inviting us to your house today. What are we gonna make, guys? We're gonna make going. You gonna make rosettes? Rosettes! <laughs> One of my favorite things ever! Okay, let's get in the kitchen, shall we? Yes. All right. Hi, my name is Bethany Tistammer Engen, and um, a little bit about me is that I was born here um, in Spring Grove, and so was my mom and my grandma, um, Annette Twidel, as well. And um, Annette Twidel is 100% Norwegian, and that's why I just treasure it so much, uh, learning the Norwegian traditions and being involved with Giants of the Earth. Um, so I went to Spring Grove High School and then I went to Luther College. Um, and then I have taught at the Spring Grove High School for five and a half years now. I teach K-12 vocal music. So that means I do uh, the singing with the little kids and I direct the choir as well. Um, in 2012, I married Tyler Engen who is also Norwegian, so Engen translates to meadow. And we live on the um, home farm that Stanley Engen had purchased, um, so Tyler's grandfather. Uh, we belong to Wilmington Church. We're uh, fifth generation, or our kids are fifth generation members, and I play organ half time at Wilmington Church. So that makes it a prerequisite why you have the fanciest aprons and yes, music and all over it. This was a gift, a wedding gift, um, made by Marion Nursted. Mm -hmm. And she made me a music one and she made Tyler a John Deere one because we're a green farm. <laughs> Fantastic. That's so. amazing. <laughs> and look, to pull in both the holidays and maybe the green farm, look at the color you chose to yeah, wear today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. It's my color. <laughs> well, thank you and Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Goyo. Hi, my name is Bethany Engen, and I'm here with my family, and we are going to make rosettes. But before we start, can you tell us your name and how old you are? What's your name? Ellen Engen. Yeah, and how old is Ellen? How many fingers is that? Three. Yeah. And what's that brother's name? Graham. And how old is Graham? I don't know how old is Graham. Six. Six. And who's that guy right there? <laughs> who's that guy? Tyler. Tyler? <laughs> Do you know how old he is? <laughs> cut, cut film. We're not talking about it. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who else is with us? Can you tell us who else is here? Should I go over there? Who's that lady with the green apron? Yeah. Grandma. 
Hi, do you want to say a few words? This, I'm so excited to come here and make rosettes, and I love to eat rosettes. No, <laughs> oh, who doesn't? <laughs> Who's the guy to your right? Yes. Hi. 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 Glad to be here today. Want to learn how to make those sets? Have you done it before? Uh, not that I remember. Oh, that's wonderful. And then we've got a helper back here too. Bonnie. 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 Yes. And Bonnie's the one that melted all the oil in the pan already. So thank you, Auntie Bonnie. So we're going to kick off the recipe with the kids and we need, you just start with one cup of milk and one cup of flour. So, which one do you want to do, the milk or the flour? Can you dump the milk in first and then you can go. the milk and many people use whole milk for their rosettes that's the okay. secret it has to be whole milk good job Ellie no, no. and now you put the flour in one cup of flour Ooh. oh <laughs> yeah do you want to stir yeah okay stir it, just, it up it just I got a cup Big job. Yeah. That's a lot of responsibility to yeah. serve. Yep, but this it, this whole thing just starts with a cup of milk and a cup of flour. It's so simple, isn't it? it? it so is. many of these Norwegian baking recipes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, but you have to think about what they had on hand normally. And even sometimes during the year, some of these would be quite luxurious items, yes. right? To have enough lard to actually melt down just to make cookies. Yeah, so, and then let's talk about that. I think the best rosettes are made with actual lard. Mm -hmm. Today we use Crisco, um, that's our go-to oil. Uh, some people use vegetable oil, right? Can but... I stir? Yeah, you can stir. No, I Here, like look. <laughs> Two stirs. Um, but yeah, I, I prefer Crisco. It melts really easy and it gets them really crisp. We've got good helpers here at the Engen household. Good job, guys. Let's ask Dad some questions. <laughs> Tyler, what is it that you love the most about Christmas? Oh, the goodies. Yeah, mm -hmm. the tradition of making the goodies. Have you been baking any other Christmas goodies lately? Well, the kids make uh, roll-up sugar cookies with at Grandma's house with mm. the cookie cutters and the sprinkles and everything like that. Mm. Hey, you're not stirring! <laughs> <laughs> What's going on in here? I better check it out. Oh, that's becoming a really good creamy batter, though. Yeah. And Mommy prefers a whisk, actually. I like to get it all whisked up here. And it is kind of It's almost like pancake batter, isn't it? I want to try that. And that's important, isn't it? Like the consistency is right when it goes into the oil. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Okay, now we're gonna add a few more ingredients. So I'm going by Janet Fossum's recipe. So we're just gonna add a little bit of sugar, a tablespoon of sugar. Can I use that? Yeah, you can put it in. But make sure you get a flat scoop. Can I? Yep. Can I get this? Can I get this? And at the same time, we're going to do a teaspoon of vanilla. So that's this little one. Can I try? Let's hold it closer over here. There we go. Ooh, okay, that. in it goes. And then just a pinch of salt. Can I try that? Nope, this is mommy's job. Mommy likes to make them too. Now, I get to mix it just a little. Don't overdo it. And then the final thing is two eggs. Can I do the eggs? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do three eggs. No, 
No, you're not gonna put three <laughs> eggs in the rosettes. Two eggs. Can I crack it? Can you crack it and put it in? No, I can crack it. I can crack it. Mommy's job. Two. All right, who's gonna whisk it up? Me. Go ahead, stir it up. I want to be the whisk. And that's it. You know, rosettes don't have a lot of sugar on the inside in the batter. It's really the sugar on the outside that we uh -huh. look forward to. <laughs> it's be, okay. Is it going to be crunchy? Yes. And delicious. I want to smell it. Crunchy and fried. I want to smell it. So, I am wondering if you boys will come back when the rosettes are done and you want to sugar the tops. I want to do that. Okay, so you can go play now. Bye. Thank you. Bye. You want to say bye? See you later. Bye, Ellen. Bye, Bye. Bye Anders. Bye, <laughs> Bye Tyler. Bye. <laughs> okay, we're gonna flip over to the frying. Uh, Bonnie, can you talk about the uh, rosette iron you have? Whose rosette iron is that? Is this Grandma's? Yeah. Oh, okay. I thought so, but it wasn't. Good. So, who is Grandma for those of us who are like into the genealogy stuff? Oh. Annette. Annette Bender. Mm -hmm. our, mo our mothers. Okay. And then the other one that you have, I got that from Bamberia in Decorah, back when oh, it was yeah. open. Um, and Bonnie is going to make, she's got the iron with the small, the small rosettes, which mm -hmm. I think are the best and the crunchiest. Mm -hmm. And then uh, my mom has the giant rosettes that are so impressive, right? When you see that huge, yes. if it's a flower or a heart or a star, and it's just the size of your head. Yes. <laughs> yes. So they uh, recommend that the irons stay in the oil for at least a minute and you can hear them like pop and sizzle, right? So mm -hmm. they're warming them up and then we blot them and we'll put it right in the batter. Okay. That is really popping and sizzling. Yeah. Yeah, it's very hot. So the oil is 375 degrees. Ooh, okay. So don't <laughs> don't touch the oil. Or drop the camera. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I'm gonna get out a towel. I just set out paper towels. They catch the oil so well. Oh yeah. Um, is it important to have your? I mean, I, I think this is for a reason, right? That these are kind of soaking in it right now to yeah. heat heat it up yep. to the right temperature. Yes, okay. because. If your iron's not hot, the batter can either fall off okay. or it can um, slip off on the inside. I have uh, I have had that where my iron goes in and the batter, like it almost keeps its shape, but it wanders away from mm -hmm. the iron, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, you gotta keep your iron really hot. We'll try it. Yeah, let's try. Some people use a really uh, wide, shallow pan for their rosettes and they get a lot going at once. I keep it simple. I have this little pot that um, Karen Freed recommended I purchase. It's how she makes hers too some, some of the time. So it's a process, but we enjoy it. And how slow baking, slow yeah. cooking. And how long you leave it in is personal preference. Like how crunchy do you like it and how dark do you like rosettes? Sure. I prefer mine pretty crunchy and pretty dark. It's kind of a beautiful process watching it mm -hmm. dark. Mm -hmm. It's a good one. Yeah. Well done, Auntie Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll do a big one. And here's the, the thing when you dip the, the iron in the uh, batter, do not get the batter above the iron because you will not get your rosette off. So uh, I'm turning it real quick. I don't want any drips here. I like a magic trick. Yeah, I'm waiting <laughs> to see what it actually looks like in there. Can you smell it? Yes. Mm, amazing. Of rosettes, but also of like funnel cakes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they pair, funnel mm -hmm. cakes. 
Mm -hmm. okay, peek at it because I just don't know. Oh, farther. I like them okay, darker. Yep. <laughs> Say that temperature one more time. 375 degrees. Okay, Perfect temperature. Mm -hmm. See if it passes the color test now for you. Yeah, it looks pretty good. I mean, you can do them even darker if you like, but Gorgeous. there we go. And then, don't want to break it, but you want to get it off fast while it's warm here. Yeah. Yeah, good thing that the pork was found. Yeah. <laughs> There, I've got one Ooh. side. Here's the next side. Yes. Ah. Look at that beautiful creation. And then I let my iron sit in again before I make the second one just to keep it hot. And the other thing I do um, is I store my rosettes above my uh, oven right up here. Oh. So if you turn and look, I have all these shapes and they're decoration. Oh, yes. Also, they also come down at Christmas time for rosettes. That's the whole thing. And then the kids, once it's cooled, I let them roll them in sugar. Wait, are you saying that you're not going to let the kids play with burning oil today? No. <laughs> they're not allowed. <laughs> All right. Well, I would like to see your mom make one. Yeah. Okay. Make the big one? Yeah, do the big one. Okay. They're so impressive. They are impressive. I bet you've got it's some like lot. some pro moves, too. Yeah. Actually, the first time we made this, I was dating my husband, and we made them, <gasps> we made them with that iron. Ah. Back in months, so. Oh my goodness! Do you remember that date? I do. How about you, Mister? Allergy. As you refresh my memory, yes, I do. Yeah. <laughs> Is that what sealed the deal that you had a really good rosette that day? It hurt me. He's such a joker. Mm -hmm. And then while that one cooks, let's sugar these. Thank you. I think pie plates are perfect to dip those rosettes. So who's Ellie and Graham? Who will dip the big one? Very gently. Pick it up like this. Like a big, yep. And just, just put it in the sugar a little bit. Gentle. And here's, yep, tip yours the other way too. Oh. Mm. Good job. And then, oh, do you know what? So well, let's flip this one over. Do you want a taste test? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Try it out. What? What do you think? What do you think yours is? Does it kind of look like a flower or a snowflake or a snowflake? You think it's a snowflake? <laughs> I actually can't taste the salt. The sugar? You can't taste the sugar? No. Does it need a little more? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Is it delicious? Yeah. <laughs> Do you want some coffee to go with it? <laughs> <laughs> so back over here. One giant one off the iron already. Oh, yeah. And are we heating them up? Yep. Oh, she's got she's one. Ooh. She's got one. So here's my question Do you have to sugar them within a certain amount of time, or can you do it like minutes later? Or they does it matter? Yeah, they recommend sugaring them cool. Oh, okay. So I don't think it matters. Um, sometimes I make them one day and sugar them the next. Okay. Like I'll make them at night and sugar them in the morning, and mm -hmm. it it depends on how sweet you like them. I right. only like a little bit of sugar on them. I actually think they can get too full of sugar, mm -hmm. but it depends on what you like. Got it. Thank you. All right, Bonnie's gonna work on getting that off. Oh, that comes off so slick, doesn't mm -hmm. it? Not nearly as much of a fight as the big ones. Mm -hmm. No. That's why you picked the little one. Yep. Mm-hmm. And now I see why it's important to get that iron so hot because then it really does stick to it on your way over to the pot. Mm -hmm. I know you from a long time ago as 
Mrs. T, of course. Yes. For anybody who is watching who doesn't know who you are, would you fill us in a little bit? Okay, my name is Karen Tistammer and I teach at the high school. I've been there 31 years. Mm -hmm. So I teach uh, the agriculture. So I just have fun all day. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, have you ever considered doing a cooking class on rosettes at school? Yeah, well, if I get some help. <laughs> <laughs> this could be a great little educational program at school, don't you think? Correct. Or maybe at Giants. We should get her to come to Giants and be our demonstrator next year during the Ulysses <laughs> Fest. That would be great. Yeah. And how many children did you have? I have two children. Yes. Bethany and Brandon. Okay. And Bethany, obviously, we're in her home. Where is Brandon these days? Brandon is farming at home. Okay. So he milks cows. All right. Awesome. He, we'll probably see him after a little bit. Well, he better stop in and get a rose up. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody should text him and tell him to get over here. <laughs> and Bonnie, what do you want us to know about you? Oh, goodness. Uh, married to Kenny. I have two children and a spoiled dog. <laughs> <laughs> What's your dog's name? Buddy. Does Buddy get rosettes? No. <laughs> <laughs> he does not. He would like to, but oh, of course. Yeah. See how this goes for me? Mm-hmm. Just okay. gentle around the edges. Very delicate, very gentle. Yep. And there it is. Oh, you? so beautiful, both of you. You're yeah, okay. yep. oh. Popped it up. I think we've got three pros in the kitchen. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, and you know, whatever rosettes look like, they always taste delicious, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now, I know the sugar goes on top. Is there anything else you've seen? You know, fruit or compote or mm -hmm. whipped cream, all of that. Almost like what could go in a sambacal, too. Sure. People will put on a rosette. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, how many of these would you generally make? Last year was unique. I made a, a double batch. Um, and then Bonnie and I traded. She made it the root mm -hmm. root. And I made it the rosettes because with COVID, we weren't doing big celebrations, right? We right. to at least get all our treats in. Yeah. So that's really nice that she's the expert on the room group. So Bonnie, you were just talking about the other reason that you love baking rosettes or maybe just baking in general. And what was that? Just getting together with family and visiting. and It's just a lot of fun. It is. I feel like part of your family today. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> So um, Bonnie and I and we either both we actually made the rumor group for the rumor group contest at Set in the Mind. Oh, the wow. group, the eating contest. Yeah. Oh wow! And <laughs> I think you could probably make a lot of people happy with rumor good. But have you ever seen somebody's stomach go sour because of eating too much of it? <laughs> <laughs> well, they may have in that contest. A lot of yeah. All those boys sure are lucky getting the <laughs> benefits of these without making them, but yeah. they did do the batter, so that's good. They did the batter. Yeah. So tell me about favorite Christmas memories that you're coming up with right now, Bonnie. I don't know. That's what I'm trying to think. We're well, cutting mm -hmm. down the tree. Yeah, that, mm. that was the best. But the tree was always, you know, it didn't look that big out in the field. <laughs> <laughs> when we got it home, we usually had to cut it because it was way bigger than what we what it looked like. Mm -hmm. And were you usually the one that would point and say, that's the one? Oh, always. Always. <laughs> the biggest one, you know, that you could find. <laughs> and was it something you found on your own land? Yeah. Yeah. Either okay. ours or actually where Karen lives. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. We also had, it was a cut your own Christmas tree farm. Oh, you had one? <laughs> yeah. Our, oh. our parents did and then and we did. Wait, tell me more about that. That's fascinating. So pe families would come and they would give them a saw or some, maybe they had a saw mm -hmm. and we had planted a lot of trees and they take a long time to grow yeah. and they would go out and cut their own tree bring it back and we charge them by the foot okay and so okay some they would come ring the doorbell and one of us kids there's eight of us would run down to the door guess how tall it is oh and my god i gosh. think it was a dollar a foot or something like that great well then you get a little money back for your investment right you're right that's a long-term thing what would people remember your tree farm 
Spotify for a name. Vendors. Okay, Vendors <laughs> Tree Farm. Yep. <laughs> Neat. Do you remember the years that you had that business in your family? Oh wow, that's yeah, that's a good question. Quite, I'm guessing 20 years maybe mm -hmm. for the ballpark. Mm -hmm. And Beth, do you remember going to the tree farm sometime, or was yeah. that after your time? Nope, when I was little. Okay. Um, so you would go up the hill, and it was on the hammer for Black Hammer. So I don't know if you know that story about how Black Hammer is named. Tell but, us, yeah. Um, so the tree farm is on top of the hammer. Can you tell that story, Mom? The, there was a fire, and the whole hammer turned black. Hmm. So they called it Black Hammer. And the, so the aerial view is, uh, it looks like a hammer. Oh, neat. And it burned. Oh, and is that when they started to replant all those trees then after it burned? Or not necessarily? Did it burn a long time? It was a long time. A long time ago. But we did plant up there too. I, th I planted trees up there when I was 15. Wow. So now do you all have, um, do you all have real trees in your house at, at this, Christmas? We still cut a tree off. On the black hammer balls. Okay. I do not. You've gone to the uh, the I'm easier sure. side. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that doesn't so drop needles. needles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For the next Everywhere. six months. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then I saw your beautiful tree already, Bob. Mine is artificial mm -hmm. and pre-lit, so I don't mm -hmm. have to string the lights. Yes. But, you know, it doesn't smell like a real tree. That's no. true. That is so true. Did you do presents on Christmas Eve or Christmas Day in your family? Usually Christmas Day. Mm-hmm. And was the Christmas Eve like a celebration thing, or was that just preparing for the next day? Mm, a little bit of both. Yeah, sometimes we had a celebration Christmas Eve too. Mm -hmm. Did you have to eat oyster stew on Christmas Eve? Not on Christmas Eve, but we did eat uh, oyster stew. Our, our dad was a big fan of it. He would buy the mm -hmm. gallon uh, container of it, and we ate that. Wow. Where would you buy a gallon container of oyster stew? <gasps> <laughs> oh, neat. Wow. And it's just the oysters, right? Yeah. And then, and then mom would make, put milk and butter and make a stew up. Oh, my gosh. That's such a rich meal, isn't it? It is. But delicious. We should have an oyster stew movie, too. <laughs> <laughs> I've, been, I've always been afraid of making it because I feel like maybe I'm going to do something wrong. Mm. Do you, Are you a fan, Bonnie? No. Okay. So what is the meal that you would make for your family at Christmas? Usually meatballs. Meatballs, um, mashed potatoes. Yeah. Is it a special recipe for meatballs? No. Okay. Do you put rice in your meatballs by any chance? I do not. Okay. Mm -hmm. My brother-in-law puts rice in them, and it's they call them um, porcupine meat. Like yes. the kids would call them porcupines. Porcupine? Yeah. And it was just funny because when I entered the family, I was talking with one of the kids, and they're like, we have porcupines for Christmas. <laughs> I was like, what, what in the heck are you talking about, child? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Mine's coming off already. Ooh. Yeah. There you go. Oh, my goodness. Just it doesn't splash you, buddy. Yep. Thank you. There you go. And there what's it? Is. it just fell right Gosh, out. well, that was kind of the luckiest scenario. That was. And it didn't even break. Beth, now you have boys who, do they enjoy food, or is it like trouble getting food down there? No, they're good throats. eaters. But, you know, they all like different things. Uh, now we're into noodles. Mmm. Like noodles. So for Christmas, I'm actually gonna make uh, tortellini pasta. It's oh. almost like a lasagna. Yeah. But not lasagna noodles, it's with tortellini. Fun, so are they the sausage cheesy and, tortellini? Yes, or, mm -hmm, cheese mm -hmm. filled, and then the pork sausage, um, my mom raised pigs. Okay. And gave uh. us half a hog, so that's what wow, we're it's delicious. It's, oh, it's so delicious, and then we have the tradition of all the holiday mornings, whether it's Easter or Christmas Day, we like cinnamon rolls and bacon. Yes. And that's very rich, but it's very good. It's the holiday. Yeah. <laughs> what do you expect? And that farm-raised bacon is so thick cut. Yes. So this is one of my favorite things when you can't get it off. You know, they're just so delicate yes. that you get to eat it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's delicious. You have to taste <laughs> test, right? Yes, yes. Mm. You have to make sure that you didn't do something wrong, like 
accidentally substitute salt for sugar. So, oh, yeah. right? mm -hmm. Just like in that, I don't know if you read this book that we carry at the Heritage Shop. It's called um, What's in the Rubber Grudge. Isn't that a sweet little story by I Carol Hagen? And Carol there's Hagen. a little mess up with the ingredients. Yeah. List. So <laughs> I um, I think that Giant started carrying that book last year. Does that sound right? And I bought it and read it to my littles. I read it to K4 at school. Um, and we read it this year, and then I got to meet Carol Hagen yesterday. Isn't she a wonderful I, human? Yeah, she was at Yule Tree Fest, and she would autograph her book, and she was uh, teaching about the color patterns of rose modeling, and you could color an ornament, so that was so special. Do you still do gifts? We, well, yes, but we actually started something last year, the saran wrap ball, where you wrap <gasps> presents in the ball. Oh, fun. And Tell my us kids more about love that. Like, that. What sort of stuff do you put in that ball? Anything from chapstick, hot cocoa, chocolates. Mm -hmm. Anything you, know. you can wrap Yeah, up, anything right? you can put in there. And you want to put um, in there? Little packs of gum yep. and um, mints. Uh, gift cards. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. So to do, do you play the... Where you roll the dice and you have to get doubles yes. before you can pass it on. Yep, yep that's how I play and it. And you have to wear oven mitts. Mm. Oh, mm. So it makes it harder yes. to unwrap the saran yeah. ball. Oh, yeah. So how big is your saran snowball? Well, last year it was only about like this. Oh, that's, kinda got, that's big. Though. Yeah. But we'll see. <laughs> see how much time I have to do. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to watch you get this last one off here. Do you ever have to restart with new oil or can you just kind of keep going in a whole day with the same? Yeah, the oil goes down, right? Because mm -hmm. it's in the rosettes. So okay. um, that was one big can of Crisco and then it, it'll go down and you might have to put a second can in. Um, also something that's going really well today is that there's no skin. <laughs> right, mm -hmm. like sometimes, it almost slips right off when you lift it up. If, I think it's the iron's not the right temperature, okay. quite right, and then it slips off. Um, but we don't have any skin in our batteries. So, like sometimes you have to just replenish the batter because it gets filmy or filmy. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I'm gonna dip these. Okay, I'll come over. And I just like a little sugar, so I only do the one side. Some people do the bottom too. Mm -hmm. well, apparently, one of your children needs a little extra. Oh, that it would be <laughs> Elling. I'm not surprised at all. I was only surprised that he didn't somehow fill the entire crevice. Yes, with like an yes. inch of sugar. Or just uh, dip his finger in the sugar, right? <laughs> <laughs> I think a lot of kids would like that. Yes. Right, this is the last one. And hello. I Oh, there's Ella. Well, hello. Welcome back to the kitchen. A taste. Yes, I think Dad needs a taste. Taste testers. I was on he's back. Which one? I saw that. I don't think it'll Oh, more <laughs> sugar. Oh, yeah, we knew. <laughs> we knew that was coming. Right? <laughs> you can't go wrong with rosettes. Come on, guys. Are you ready to say Merry Christmas to us now? <laughs> Why don't you do it with your dad on the count of three? One, two, three. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Oh, from the Engins house <laughs> to your house. Thank you so much for the beautiful rosette tutorial, Bethany. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. Oh, you're welcome. We'll see you next year. Goo Yoon.